All right, guys, so I know I said I was gonna post a video on this, so here we are. I uh, put a tune with an Excel Super Tuner um, off of Submit Racing on this truck, and I tell you what, works pretty good. Took about a second off the zero to 60, which is pretty gnarly, but um, we've got lean codes, and there is a bit of an exhaust leak. It's bank too, and there's an exhaust leak on this bank, and the oxygen sensor is behind the uh, exhaust leak because it's on the pipe behind the manifold. So I'm going to fix that before I worry about that too much. But right now, what I'm going to do is go ahead and take these gears out, the 373s, and put in some 488s. Yeah, that's right, 488s. And yes, I'm running 32-inch tires, so... I don't really care. It's going to be like 2600 RPM at 70 miles an hour, so that doesn't seem that bad to me. Um, and yeah, I'm going to go ahead and do it. Step one, pull the drive shaft off. And then step two, pull the uh, diff cover off. Alright, and hopefully you know that uh, the differential actually has uh, gear oil in it. And also, if you have a limited slip, which you can find that by looking up the decoder on your tag, you might not want to do this in an area that uh, you care about smell. You might want to close all your house doors because it smells like absolute shit. Um, this limited slip additive that Ford has, I put some in my truck, opened it up in my house, and it, it stunk for days, dude. It sucked. But basically, I'm jacking this up in the air now. Everything's off. Now you can see should be free spinning but it's not um, probably because probably because there's a brake stuck on or because I'm retarded and that tire is on the ground but anyway um, yeah I'm gonna jack this up the right way and then I'll show you what to do next now, if you ever see a differential leak or some oil around your differential, you may not think that it's leaking that much, but over the course of, let's say, 10 years of that, um, you'll end up with not as much gear oil in your diff as you're supposed to have, which is not the best. Uh, so make sure that if you want to have good lifespan on your diff, all you have to do, take the cover off, Buy some ultra black silicone, and you can give me shit about ultra black. I use ultra black for everything, anything and everything except for head gaskets and exhaust. That I use ultra copper, but ultra black is the best for oil. Um, and, you know, that'll seal it up, and then you put the new gear oil in with the limited slip additive if you have limited slips. And you can tell if you have limited slip because you'll see that there's like little bit more meat here and you'll probably be able to see the clutches in there and by the looks of things this actually doesn't look like it has a lot of clutch dust so those look fine but anyway let's get on to the uh, gear swap so we're gonna rotate this around until we find the diff pin bolt which hopefully isn't broke off And you can see this is a decent one, and you can hear it clunking. So if you have a little bit of a slack or looseness in your rear end, it's not a big deal. You can have, like, a little bit of that. I have that in my truck, too. But anyway, you're going to take that out, and then slide the dip pin out, and then slide the axles out. I'll show you. And this here bolt actually happens to be a 3 8 um, You're going to want to make sure that you don't break it off, um, because that's a pain in the ass, but... If you do, no big deal. Just buy a new one. Here's that bolt, and you can see it did not break. Next step, you're going to want to get your rear end in a position um, to where the spider gears don't move through this process. Um, because when those move, what happens is it's a real bitch. So you got to not have that. And you can see in here, there's like a little clip right there. That pin, once that comes out, 
in, like in the case of my truck breaking that pin, all that's holding your axles in is those two things. So if your axle slides in and that thing comes out, your wheel is going to fall off and destroy lots of things, maybe possibly even your axle housing, which is not a good deal. Um, so we're going to want to get that lined up to where that pin just slides out. You can see it already starting to move right there because this thing's like brand new looking. And uh, so we're going to get it like right there. And then I'm going to slide that out and then I'll show you what to do next. Now try to keep your pin uh, bolt in here the way it came out so that way you know exactly which way it went in because as you can see it wears a certain way and what you end up with is a lot of slop in your rear end if you have to let it wear again in a different spot. Um, a lot more slop than you want at least. And then now basically what's going to happen is you're going to go ahead and try to well, first you're going to pull the rear or the axle and the wheel. I don't I didn't even take the wheels off. And now you can see that thing is sticking out more than that side. I all I did was barely push on it. And then you're going to you probably can't see. Push that thing off and it just fell out like you can see there. Um, and that is what is holding on your wheel. So, when that comes out, that's bad. So when you try to get your truck home in four-wheel drive, you should probably think twice about that and maybe not do that. But I'm basically going to put this over there for that side. Um, and then I'll show you the axle. Oh, shit. How it comes out. Rub out my oil onto there. Should just come out, I believe. But I'm not familiar with these. I'll come back to you. Sorry about that. Uh, looks like you have uh, what's called disc brakes there. And I just actually changed those. And I don't know how I didn't remember that. But yeah, I'm used to drum brakes. So that would work on a drum brake system where you could just slide that off. But in this case, you have to take the uh, caliper off. So I'll go ahead and do that. Now, since this is an informational video, um, and if you're still watching, Instead of taking this bleeder valve off and ruining your brakes, especially the ones that I just spent a lot of time doing, what you do here is you just take this, not on the pad material, but on the metal, and you just pry in between the road. So there's your axle, and your other axle slid right out after I took the calipers off. I bolted them back on so that way they don't try to expand from the gravity of the fluid. Um, and now I'm going to go ahead and impact the nut off on the pinion so that way I don't have to fight it when I get the whole rear end apart. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And if you are doing this without impact tools, air tools, um, you might want to take your tires off and all of this before you uh, jack the car up in the air. Just take off that pinion uh, bolt and all that. This is actually a uh, one and one eighth socket for the uh, pinion nut on my 9.75. And now that that pinion bolt is off and the pinion flange, drive shaft flange is off, you're going to take these four bolts out right here and your whole carrier assembly is going to come out. And it's heavy. And then you're going to press the bearing out with one of these bearing splitters. Make sure that the cage isn't getting hit by the bearing splitter. And there's the bearing off. Now I'm going to clean it up and try to find something to press it onto the other gear. Alright guys, so I didn't show a lot because there was a lot of work and precision involved with all this, but I basically pressed on the new bearing onto, or the old bearing onto the new pinion uh, by heating up the bearing in the oven and then putting the pinion in the freezer. And then after that, I came out here and then put the ring gear on here uh, with the new bolts and Loctite and torqued them to 110 foot pounds. I made sure that the preload on the pinion is right and it's exactly about 1.6 foot pounds or 20 uh, inch pounds which is good to go. And then I 
and then I uh, goofed up. I thought that I wasn't able to make these stock shims work, but I actually flipped the stock shims around, and it's exactly ten thousandths of backlash here. Before, it wouldn't even turn, like the gear was just stuck. And then I put the paint, just regular old spray paint, because I lost my gear mesh paint, and you can see the mark here, how it's right in the middle. That's what you want. You want it right in the middle there, and right in the middle that way, and that means your gear mesh is perfect. So, yeah, it's good to go back together now. And putting it back together is basically the exact opposite.